Welcome to the first Brain Sponge blog podcast. If it's brain related, then Brain Sponge is interested. To kick off the first podcast, let us start with the first post of this year, which is all about the motivation behind New Year's resolutions. Did you make a New Year's resolution this year? Making goals feels good, doesn't it? You feel full of hope and determination. Unfortunately, that changes and there's nothing you can do about it. So think back to the last time you achieved a goal. Were you as positive and hopeful towards the end as you were to start? For most of us, those positive feelings that help keep us on track tend to dissipate after the midway point. These feelings of hope, aspiration and excitement that we get at the start of a goal are what is called promotive motivation. We imagine ourselves after losing weight, we get excited about getting fit. We bask in the glow of a promised achievement. When we use promotion, promotive motivation, we focus on the positive changes we need to make. To lose weight, we should eat more healthily. To get fit, we should go to the gym. We focus on the positive things we need to do. But as we get closer to the end of a goal, things get tougher. We tend to focus more on the things that we have to stop doing, like we should cut out junk food, or we should stop driving short distances, and maybe walk. By the time we achieve our goal, it can feel more like a relief than the joy we expect it to feel. This type of motivation is called preventive motivation. Researchers at the University of Winnipeg and University of Manitoba devised five experiments to test whether we do actually switch from promotive to preventive motivation and at what point. The results of their paper, paper showed that the crossover point comes roughly halfway through the goal. So it seems that all goals go from excitement to gritty determination. So how can we use that knowledge to help us? I don't know about you, but I excel at the first part of goal setting, but not so much at the second part. And it seems like I'm not alone. A recent survey of UK adults revealed that 63% of them failed to keep their New Year's resolution and two thirds of those gave up within a month. So what can we do? One simple trick is to shrink the process. Break big abstract goals into several achievable and measurable sub goals. Instead of making a vague resolution to lose weight, make several goals that you can measure. Eat a salad three times a week, maybe do 20 minutes of exercise each day. Try to treat these as goals within themselves. Feel the positive emotions of promotive motivation for each mini goal and pay attention to the gritty details when preventive motivation kicks in. With smaller goals, the finish line is always that much closer. You're less likely to give up in frustration when the rose tinted dream fades a little. You can also use promotive and preventive motivation to your advantage. At the start of your resolution, make a list of the positive things or feelings you will get by sticking to your goal. Reward yourself when you make progress, but make sure that your reward is not a cheat on your resolution. Gorging on chocolate because you ate an extra car carrot is counterproductive. So instead, pick a reward that's totally unrelated to your goal. In the later stages of your resolution, you should focus on your responsibilities. Note how sticking to your goal will help you in your everyday life and make a list of all the things you need to avoid to stay on track. Think about doing the things that you need to stop doing. Or list the bad foods you need to give up. Write down the negative things that your resolution will save you from. And again, reward yourself. But this time the reward should be maybe skipping something that you find unpleasant. Again, this should be unrelated to your goal, but you know, put off something that you don't like doing for a day. After all, you've earned it. So these techniques are not restricted to New Year's resolutions, they'll work for any goal. So why not give it a try? There's no better time than now. Thank you for listening to the very first Brain Sponge Blog podcast. Please visit brainspongeblog.com for more content and check us out on your favorite social media channel. Thank you and goodbye.